One of the unique features of an iOS device is GPS. So let's use this feature to grab the address using GPS and a little help from Google. First thing you need to know is how does FileMaker grab latitude and longitude? That's through either the location or location values functions. Now location provides you the latitude and longitude if you give the accuracy in meters and the timeout which is optional at 60, se 60 seconds default which is probably too much. I usually don't want to wait that long and you don't need to wait that long usually. And it actually provides a latitude, longitude and horizontal accuracy. That's provided in a comma separated. Now when we come over to location values it's the same information as just location values you give the accuracy and timeout but it returns all that information, additional information, in a return separate list which is easier to work with. So even though it gives us more information, I'm going to use location values because it's easier to work with. So we've already programmed this because it's actually a substantial script. It's fairly complicated. But you'll be familiar with most of the stuff if you followed all the videos. So first thing we do is we allow user board and set our capture like normal. And then we're going to do this in steps. First thing we're going to do is grab the location. If we did it all in one calculation, it would get very unwieldy and we want it to be easier to understand. So we come in here and we set dollar sign location to, you can see location values here, we set it to 100 meters with 10 second timeout, and then we put it together. See how easy it is to grab the latitude and longitude with the get value function? And then, even though the other one, the location function, had it comma separated, it would have been hard to get that extra item off the end, much harder than just using get value and concatenating that comma in the middle. And the reason we need that comma in the middle is because that's what Google wants. That'll be our next step, which is to insert from URL. And remember this from our scraping section. We actually insert all of the code, the HTML and the Java and everything that's behind the scenes, you know, it shows you your web page. It grabs that and puts it into a field for you. And I'm choosing to put it into customer notes. Now that's probably not a good idea. Why? Because you probably have notes in there. But I just wanted you to be able to see the data that was in there. So let's go ahead and before we take a look at this Google API URL, let's go ahead and take this stuff and disable it. I'll save that. Then we'll come over here and say add customer. Then we'll come over here and we've added a button. You see we've moved everything up. We kind of tighten everything up and put the first name and last name next to each other and things like that. If I click that right now, we don't get much of anything. That's because it put it into a variable. But let's see what happens when we open this up. We're going to go ahead and enable that and then save it and then click it and you're going to see we get the entire website. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but let's understand how it did that. So what we did was we looked inside of their API and it's a, you know, you can just Google this or use whatever search engine and find it. And it'll tell you this is what you have to make it look like. So all we did was we took that static text and in the middle we said, oh, there's the latitude and longitude. Okay, we'll put our dollar sign location there. Really quite simple. Once you find the exact URL call. And that's how we're able to insert all that code in there. And then what we did was we said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and look in this line right here. We're going to look for some text. I searched through it already. And I know that where I want that block of text is where it says formatted address in the website. And where I want it to stop is at a quote. So I did an escape character and then a quote that allows me to return or, or you know search for that quote value. Now this is all the stuff we did in our parsing uh, section. You know we we get the starting position, add 22 because the starting position is going to be where the F is in formatted. We want it way down here at the end, and then we look for the end, which is uh, you know starting at a point not on the first character of all that text, but where the start you know, ended up being. We wanted to find that quote after that. So we want everything there. That's where I found out. I found out the, you know, characters that were unique that surrounded the information I wanted. So then what we do is we use that to go ahead and use the middle function. And we say, go ahead and grab starting at the start and then subtract end and start. Remember, you have to have a length there. You can't have an end, so we subtract the two and you get the length. 
Then we had to go ahead in that point, and once we got all that information, then we said take the comma spaces and make the returns. That's so it's easier for us to work with them. Then finally we're ready to go ahead and parse out the data. So we'll turn that on, save this. And it was quite simple because we had a return separate list. It was very easy to get it. Now, unfortunately, state and postal code were on the same line, so I had to do further uh, you know, parsing of them. It wasn't as easy as just doing a get value. And then finally, I did a commit record here, so I didn't have that notes field. Now, you wouldn't normally need this because you probably put it into the postal code field. Um, you know, but unfortunately, actually, the postal code field's not here. We couldn't do it from the insert from URL because that field's required to be on the layout. We can do the set field because it doesn't require the field to be on the layout, but that's one reason, another reason why I use notes instead of postal code here. But again, we don't want to really use notes. We'd probably end up maybe using, you know, the state field or something instead, and uh, that would work just as fine as well. So let's see what happens when we run it this time. See, so it takes a second, and it doesn't give you complete accuracy. Uh, it's given, you know, some information. It's 2066 Rancho Hills here. You probably aren't going to get complete accuracy here, but at least you don't have to type in the city, the state, and the zip code is there, even though you can't see it. You can come in here real quickly and make some changes. Go, okay, I know it's at 2066. So I'll put in that 6 there, and that saved you a ton of time, even though it wasn't completely accurate. Sometimes it will get it completely accurately, So, and you can play around with the timeout um, and the accuracy and see what happens. And, you know, I tried down at, you know, 10 meters, but when you go down to 10 meters, uh, most of the time it didn't get any more accurate, but it took a lot longer. So it's best probably to stick with the, you know, the settings that I've shown you here. And then it can make your life a lot easier when you go ahead and parse these. And I've been using this for uh, probably two or three years, so that website, Google, is good about keeping it the same so that you can scrape it so they won't change it, so things won't, you know, that's one of the worries you have with scraping websites that they change. Well, this one hasn't changed in a while, but you do have to check it occasionally to make sure the website hasn't changed and it's disrupting your script.